Welcome back to another episode of The Road Chose Me. My name is Dan Grek, and today let's get into even more details about my Gladiator that I forgot to tell you because I was too excited in the last video. Let's talk about the most important thing you should do when you first buy a vehicle before you make any modifications, and let's dig in and start the very first modifications on my Gladiator. So I'm gonna get into all of that on this episode. Stick around, let's go for a drive and get right into it. So as I said, I was so excited in the last video, I forgot to tell you guys some important stuff about the Gladiator that I now have. And uh, the big one that everyone's asking is what about engine and transmission combination? And obviously in North America, you guys have a couple of choices. The thing is, here in Australia, there are no choices on either of those. So the Gladiator comes with only one engine. That is the 3.6 litre gas engine. I'm gonna start saying petrol because here I am in Australia, we call it petrol. And for transmission, you can only get the eight speed auto. That's it, you cannot get the six speed manual and you cannot get the three litre eco diesel. And it's hard to say why Jeep Australia have made that decision. Maybe it's simply a support thing. We do know that the eco diesel is here in Australia. It's in the Grand Cherokee. It's actually in a Maserati as well, same engine made by VM. And uh, so it's not like they can't support it. What I heard, and I don't have any insider info on this, but I read somewhere that the three litre eco diesel, it doesn't package for right hand drive. So what does that mean? That's auto manufacturer speak for we couldn't make it fit. So probably because the steering is on the other side, probably because the brake booster and all of that is on the other side, whatever it is about the engine, it simply doesn't fit when everything is reversed compared to the North American version. So anyway, that means I can't have a diesel in the Gladiator even if I wanted. And would I have chosen one? That's a really complicated decision. I think I might have here in Australia because diesel is very widely, probably more widely available and it is high quality in nearly all places. Uh, and obviously I'm not driving through Uzbekistan, I'm not taking this around Africa. So I think I would have had the diesel if I could have had that choice. And now that I have the 3.6 litre engine, would I have had the manual transmission, the, the six speed stick shift? Uh, again, that's a complicated decision, I don't know. I've never had an auto in an off-road vehicle like this before. I've never been overlanding in an automatic transmission. So part of me is curious to sort of find out and learn what it's all about. And I can tell you already, it's way easier to drive this thing simply because it's an auto, not having to feather the clutch to get it off the line. You know, when I'm maneuvering it, it's a go-kart. You just push the pedal and away you go. In some senses, there's kind of less engagement and I can't tell what my road speed is but in other senses, it is much easier, it's much simpler. But all of that is to say, this Gladiator has the 3.6 litre engine and it has the eight speed automatic transmission. And so I said earlier, there is something you should do with your vehicle before you make any modifications. And that is, we're gonna take it right now to a Waybridge. I think it's really important if you buy your vehicle used and it's already a little bit modified, maybe you buy it brand new, it's really important to get a baseline, understand how much your vehicle weighs before you start modifying it. I genuinely believe that all overlanders struggle with payload and being over the gross vehicle weight rating. It is just a problem we face, especially when you're driving lighter duty vehicles like these. Probably people in half million dollar Unimogs and MAN trucks, they're not having this same problem, but for those of us driving kind of regular consumer vehicles, Land Cruisers, Land Rovers, Jeeps, you know, Nissans, any pickup truck, I think payload is really the biggest issue we face. Simply because we wanna bring all of our camping gear, all of our food to cook, clothes, obviously like build it out to have a nice sleeping area, a fridge, a kitchen, everything, tools, spare parts, you know, the list goes on and on. Our vehicles get heavy and we run up against gross vehicle weight rating. So for that reason, I'm really curious. I wanna weigh this thing. Let's find out exactly how much it weighs right now. Then I'm gonna do my modifications, some of which are actually gonna take weight away from the vehicle and quite a few of which are obviously gonna add weight to the vehicle. But at least then I know where I'm at. And when the 
build is all said and finished, I'll take it to the same weigh bridge and I'll weigh it again. And then that means I'll know exactly how much weight I've added and I'll know exactly how much I've still got left to play with. Fingers crossed I do have some left to play with. Or if I'm actually right at or even over the weight rating and if I have to actually change some of my decisions. So getting your vehicle weighed, I think comes before any modifications. In terms of the modifications I have planned, as I said last time, I'm not modifying the drivetrain. I bought the Rubicon, so I don't need to do that. So what I am doing is working on a lot of different living systems, and there's a few things that I'm really excited about. One of them, when I designed and built the dual battery setup in the Jeep I drove around Africa, that really was dual isolated batteries from the 1960s. It worked, but very unsophisticated, very simple. Versus on this Jeep, I'm really excited. I've designed and I'm putting together what I'm calling 21st century dual isolated batteries. That's something I'm really excited about. Much lighter weight, much more sophisticated, many more features. Another thing that I'm really looking forward to, I am adding an extra gas tank to this vehicle, a petrol tank. So that'll basically double my range. And again, it has some features that I think really set it apart from the other tanks that are on the market. Especially here in Australia, there are a couple of different manufacturers who make auxiliary tanks for the Gladiator, but the one I'm going with, I think is really primo. As well as that, there'll be another drinking water tank, uh, a pump and a filtration setup. So I'll once again have running drinking water like I did in my Africa Jeep. Of course, I'll have a fridge and I'm actually working with a company they're gonna send me the very first prototype of their brand new kitchen that they're working on. And so this will be a big slide out drawer kitchen that will integrate everything I need in a kitchen as well as the fridge, and that will all be in the bed of the Gladiator. And here on the screen, this is a rendering of how it should look. Things have been tweaked a little bit since then, but this kitchen I think is gonna be really great. As well as those modifications, of course, some upgrades to recovery equipment. So there'll be a winch, there'll be a new front bumper. I've got lighting coming and I'm going to build and design a canopy to cover the rear bed of the Gladiator. I've said it a few times now, I think a lot of the options on the market, they are quite heavy, they are quite expensive. Uh, I think they work really well, but especially to get one shipped here to Australia would be extraordinarily expensive and it might take six months at the moment thanks to COVID shipping delays. So instead, I'm gonna have something made locally. Australians have been building what they call tornado covers for utes, basically since the beginning of all time. So there's a lot of companies that have a lot of experience using canvas, using lightweight frames to make an enclosure on the back of what Australians call utes, what you guys in North America call pickup trucks. So I think that's gonna be really great as well. A lightweight option to keep everything in the back of the Gladiator out of the weather, out of the dust, all of that kind of thing. So those are all the really big tent pole modifications I have planned. But of course, there's a whole lot of little ones as well. I need to add a snorkel. I need to extend the diff breathers. I'll be adding an air compressor. I'll actually be removing some of the rear seat here and building rear storage inside so that I can store all of my cameras, have a charging station, have a whole electrical distribution and fuse block, all of that kind of thing. So there are a ton of modifications planned on this build. And actually, right after I get it weighed, let's head home and we'll dig into the very first modification, which I'm pretty excited about because it's actually gonna remove weight from the Jeep. Maybe one of the only times I'll actually do that. Just throw it in at the end offhand. Like, oh, by the way, can you tell us how much we weigh? Are you gonna be closer? I don't wanna go too close. I wanna scratch my wheels. Oh, yeah. G'day, I've got a whole lot of paint tins. Tox free shed. Perfect. Can you tell us what we weigh? How much is the charge? Yeah, I'll pay that. <laughs> I'd love to know how much this weighs. 2.5 even. 5.4. 2.54. Thanks very much. Thank you. I hope that's how it'd go. <laughs> <laughs> So there we go, we just had it on the Weighbridge and it weighs 2.5 tonnes, 2,500 kilograms. 
So when we throw that into Imperial, we get 5,500 pounds as it sits right now. That was with dad and I both in and half a tank of gas, petrol. So that I'm really happy to have a baseline. Now I know exactly where I'm starting from. And as I add things, turn it into my house on wheels, at the end, I'll be able to weigh it and then determine what suspension I need based on how much it weighs. Because if I don't know how much it weighs, I can't choose the right suspension to carry that amount of weight. So I do really think that's the first thing you should do with any vehicle that you buy that you're planning to turn into an overlander. So now that that's out of the way, let's begin the modifications. It's time to start turning wrenches. And the first thing I'm gonna do is pull out the back seat. So I am really excited. My family are gonna come along for parts of this trip here and there. So I'm only going to remove 60% of it, which is basically on the Australian version, the, past, the rear seat behind the driver and then the middle seat in the back. Both of those I'm gonna take out, but I will leave the far side or the one that's actually on the left behind the front passenger here in Australia. So I will have the capability to carry three people, which is an upgrade over the Jeep that I drove around Africa. So enough talking, enough of this. Let's get to the actual work, remove some weight and get that back seat out. So there you have it. Dad and I just ripped out the back seat. And uh, I guess all along I was planning on ripping out that 60% delete as they call it. I didn't really plan on pulling out this rear plastic thing. There was the big Bluetooth speaker. It even had a big subwoofer. And then like this big bulbous plastic thing, I guess it makes the speaker sound better. Um, but once we took it out, we realized, look at the enormous amount of room we've just opened up. And so the plan here is for this seat to stay where it is, so I'll always be able to carry three people, but basically to build some sort of cabinet structure here. And to be honest, I haven't designed it yet. And so one of the reasons that I wanted to do this so early is because now we can spitball it. Every time we're working on something else, Dad and I will probably put cardboard boxes in here, we'll start measuring things, we'll start brainstorming what's actually gonna be useful in terms of storage. And probably the first thing we're gonna do now that we see what we're working with, we'll put a flat piece of plywood or whatever material we use, basically just to cover all of these electronics and all of this stuff. And we're just testing it with a piece of scrap wood. It actually works really well. It'll sit flush right here on this surface and then go straight down to the floor right where this ripple is. So it'll be perfectly vertical, flat wall, covering all of that because we don't want gear to bang up against it and then that'll give us our perfect working space. So what I really like here is this just gives us that kind of brainstorming time or those you know, ideas that now we can toss around in our head. And definitely the auxiliary battery is going to get mounted here, the solar charge controller, probably wiring central. I've got a fuse block that has all different circuits. All of that will be here somehow, probably as low as I can get it. Maybe a false floor above that, so that that stuff's all kind of permanently down. And then some sort of big box, laptop camera storage, maybe even some clothing storage up high because clothes are nice and light, so we can keep that stuff up high. Um, I don't really know, to be honest. That's, that's part of this whole build is just learning as I go along and figuring out what's gonna work for me. Uh, originally, I was going to mount the fridge here and access it from that back door, like I do in my current Africa Jeep. But I've since uh, been talking to a really good friend of mine has a company. He's going to build me a kitchen and fridge setup for the back of the Gladiator. So that means I don't need the fridge here accessible from this rear door. So now I have all of this space to, you know, do something else. So. That's kind of uh, the first step. 
and we really did remove a lot of weight. This 60% chair, this is heavy. Uh, that took me two hands to pick up. That's gotta be 60 pounds, I'm going to say. The speaker wasn't light. You can see all this plastic trim. This is the security lockbox that Jeep have that I have no use for. I will put the jack back in somehow, somewhere. I'll figure that out later. But yeah, already I've got a pile of stuff. Uh, this Jeep currently has 500 kilometers on it, about 300 miles. <laughs> and I'm pulling stuff out and putting it on the floor. So there we have it. It feels great to get the modifications underway. And it feels great to actually reduce some of the weight of the Jeep so that now I can go and add back other things. And you might be wondering, what order am I going to do all of my modifications? Well, I have a few limitations on me right now that'll be a bit different than what you're doing. So I really don't want you to just copy me or think that what I'm doing is in some sort of logical order. It really isn't. I have a couple of constraints right now. I can't do anything that makes the Gladiator taller than it already is because then it won't fit in dad's garage here. I also am waiting on parts to come still from the US, still from all over the place. So that's kind of like blocking certain things. And I have a couple of modifications that I'm calling long lead items that actually are going to take quite a few weeks to sort of coordinate and organize. So while I've got started on those in the background, you won't see the results of them until I've already put in a whole bunch of work. So for these reasons, what I'm doing won't always make sense. But I do think also it makes sense. I need to hurry up and start like drilling holes in this thing, mounting stuff, get over this idea that it's a super shiny brand new vehicle and start getting ready to use it for what I actually bought it for. That is to get crazy remote. So the odd scratch is inevitable. Obviously it's gonna get covered in mud and dirt and the sooner I get over that, the better. So I hope you've enjoyed all of this. On the very next video, let's keep the theme rolling and have more and more modifications. If you've enjoyed this video, do hit the thumbs up button, subscribe. The whole Overland build is coming right now on this Jeep Gladiator. I have to get it all done in the next four to six weeks. It's gonna be a huge amount of work and I can't wait to show you everything that I'm going to do to this Jeep to turn it into my ultimate Overland house on wheels vehicle. Thanks again for watching and maybe I'll bump into you on the road.